One of the things I love about teenagers, by their nature, they need to do things that rub adults the wrong way. And I think this is such a great topic in terms of it's a place where reasonable parents will disagree. Episode 191, Should I Let My Kid Use Swear Words? I had the most embarrassing carpool moment a couple weeks ago. Ooh, do tell. I am in my car and Spotify is running and it's a group of girls coming from ballet and there is Taylor Swift, full blast, but my son had turned on on our Spotify family share, explicit lyrics on. Mm. So it is full on Taylor who we love, but I prefer without all of the, you know, curse words with it. Yeah, no, she uses the F word. She absolutely did. Taylor. So anyway, we we love her music and I could not figure out from my car how to turn (laughs) it up. And apparently if you are in this position in the future, you've got to get off of that system and go and turn it off on your app or whatever. All right. I, I, so you, I, I you just, were corrupting all of the neighborhood. I was corrupting all the neighborhood kids. I later yeah. spoke to their mothers about it, and they're like, "Oh, please don't." Like, <laughs> they're like whatever, please. don't worry about it's it. It's the least of our worries at this point. <laughs> okay. But it, I will tell you, it was uncomfortable, and I didn't like it. And that's why I'm thrilled to read you this letter because I have been struggling with this all summer, and I want your take on it because I have a very strong take, and okay. I love to share this with you. Dear Dr. Damore, my 10-year-old has an explosive personality and the mouth of a sailor. He both curses in general and curses at people, especially his siblings. I'm getting phone calls from school about this, and I feel like I'm up against a brick wall. I've Googled how to stop my kid from cursing and keep seeing contradictory advice. Some say, ignore it. Others say, it's verbal abuse, and I must give him timeouts, which doesn't work. In a perfect world, I'd have him in therapy. But a very contentious divorce and limited finances makes that extremely complicated. Can you help? Signed, struggling mom. Okay. First up, why are boys doing this? Why is this like, it feels like this is so important to them to listen to lyrics, to be able to curse. Mm, Okay. So let's take this, let's let's tease two things apart. So why do kids like to curse and why is this kid cursing? So let's start with this kid. There's something right at the end of the letter that I think is really important, that there is a contentious divorce going on. There are limited resources. You know, often contentious divorces can be quite ugly and painful, right? That's what a contentious divorce almost always means. Um, And it sounds like this kid is swearing at his siblings, uh, the explosive personality piece. So why this kid is swearing is, honestly, this sounds like a boy who is in a lot of emotional pain, who is very angry and upset. And the swearing is part of that picture for him. Mm. His swearing to me feels different than like the kind of swearing the kids like to do on the back of the bus swearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And feels part of something that like needs to be handled very, very specifically and well. And um, I hate that this kid isn't getting the support that he should have. I totally get it where this family feels strapped and they can't make it happen. In the short term, you know, the kinds of things that might make a difference, like one, I wonder about a school counselor. You know, schools, counseling systems are much better than they've ever been. I wonder if he could get some support at school. I wonder about the parent talking with him about how angry he is and that he Mm -hmm. can be angry and there's lots of ways to be angry that are okay, but swearing at your siblings is not one of them. Mm So I think his swearing finds itself in a special category where it's not okay, Mm -hmm. right? It's a sign of great pain and suffering, and it's causing pain and suffering. So for that kind of swearing, I think it's really important that the kid get the support they need and we take very seriously that he's in pain and causing Mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. In pain and causing pain. In general, though, Lisa... I do feel like there's a certain age where like, I can listen to these explicit lyrics now, I'm old enough, I can use this word. You know, what? why do kids in general tend to do this? I have a smile on my face <laughs> because one of the things I love about teenagers is the fact that by their nature, they need to do things that rub adults the wrong way. 
they need to push off against us. They need to cause friction. Why? And <laughs> because they need to establish their independence. They need to move the culture forward. They cannot just fall in line and think we're awesome all the time mm -hmm. and love everything about us and everything we do. Like they have to establish their own view of the world and make it clear that they are their own people. Mm -hmm. And the way they do it is they do stuff we don't like. And the smile on my face is the like wonderful range of stuff the kids do that makes parents bananas, but that is really either entirely harmless or basically harmless. <laughs> and so like swearing, like, and especially like kids using, you know, naughty language on the back of the bus, right, is in that category. You know, or it's things like teenagers listening to music that their parents don't like that has, you know, explicit or raunchy lyrics. Or, you know, I cared for a teenager who, you know, would wear this like crazy colored lipstick mm. that her mom, like it was like yeah. blue or green or whatever. And like, yeah, it looked kind of weird, but it was also like annoyed the adult. And I think totally. that that was like what the kid had in mind and it was working quite well yeah. in that way. So for me, swearing... The kind of playful mess around swearing that kids do falls into that category. And you can see I have a very high tolerance for it, <laughs> but I don't think you feel that way about it. No, I don't. I just sort of feel like it's not really necessary. Like, you know, take, take it out on the basketball court or something like that. You know, I just sort of, I, do you need to be doing this? But do you think, is there a way to get kids to stop? Because this mom was saying, like, in going back to this letter, yeah. you were saying this is a little bit differently. You can see the anger and the frustration a little bit. But mom's like, Look, you know, he's a teen. I'm not going to put him in timeout. That doesn't right. work, right? So, like, what does work if you do want to change that behavior? Okay. So, say you're a parent, and I think you're a parent, who's like, do not swear. Like, do not swear, certainly in front of me. You know, and it sounds like, is your, what's your rule with your kids? Like, what do you, what, it's not, you just don't, you, you just don't. But um, I realize that sometimes words slip out of my mouth. And so like, uh, mom, see, like, you know it, like what, you know? But okay, but actually, like, just like to rest on that for a minute, Rena. So you're like, okay, don't swear. And then of course, every once in a while, something comes out yeah. that you're like, whoops. Yeah. But when you swear, do you say, right, I shouldn't have said that? Or do you say... I can say what I want. I'm an adult. You as kids cannot yet do that. No, How do you I try it? to be like, okay, you know, yes, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I just try, I'm just trying to like, do you really need to do it? And I think it's probably the way I was growing when my parents didn't, but you know, my parents are from South India and the language mm -hmm. we speak is Malayalam. So there's a word that's like, oh crap. It's like she, she, like S-H-E-H. -H. So I'm like, oh, oh she, she. But sometimes I'm really saying something else. And the kids are like, <laughs> we know what you said. You weren't speaking Malayalam when you were doing that. And I'm like, oh, shit, shit. So now the okay. kids like make fun of me. And when something goes, they start to use that. And uh, well, and yeah. like good young teenagers call you on the carpet for oh, your hypocrisy. Yes, you're absolutely. You were the one <laughs> who opened my do. eyes to that. They yes, absolutely they do. do. Okay. But you basically go with the idea that there's not supposed to be swearing in your house. Yeah. When you do it, you sort of either take it right back or do it in another language. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you don't want them to do it. Okay. Yeah. I think that it is a perfectly reasonable thing for families to say, we don't want you swearing. And, and I think this is such a great topic in terms of it's a place where reasonable parents will disagree. Mm -hmm. Some parents will say, you know what? I consider it rude. I do not like it. I don't do it. I don't want my kids doing it. You're not to do it. And... You know, if a kid does it, you know, you just, you'd be like, knock it off, like cut it out. And, and it kind of sours the moment. And, you know, for a lot of kids, if otherwise you're having a good time, souring the moment by letting a word fly, you know, is enough for them to be like, okay, I'm not going to do it again. Again, Rena, this is sort of in the grand scheme of having cared for a lot of teenagers for a long time. If that is what the fights at home are about, with a teenager is that every once in a while a kid is dropping an F-bomb, as we say here in Ohio, mm -hmm. and the parent is like reacting badly and then the kid yeah. is like a little bit chagrined. If that is the shape of the friction while that kid's in high school and there's not more to it, you know, they're not smoking in their bedroom. They're right. not sneaking right. out of their window. Totally. Like teenagers need to find friction with adults. If this is where it's at, I would say things are going great. I see it in broad, <laughs> you know, having seen just how spicy teens can be. Like yeah. this one is not for me a problematic mm -hmm. place to have friction arrive. Okay. I take it, I have a different take on it. 
first of all, I really like to swear. I, um, I enjoy it at times, and I'm going to come back to my research basis for why I enjoy it. <laughs> this is going to be one. good. This is going to be and good. And I actually don't mind when my kids swear in the house. Really? As long as, yeah, I really, you know. I'm, I'm really know. surprised. This is something really? I did not expect coming from you. No, I didn't really think that you'd be <laughs> okay with this. It. They have to be above a certain age. I don't know what the magic age was, because I remember one of my daughters, when she was, I thought, too young, used a word, that a swear word. Okay, and this will tell you exactly how little control I sometimes have in my house. I said, you can't say that. And she said, well, you say that. And I said, well, there are words you can hear and there are words you can say. Ooh. To which she said, I think that's BS. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right this is truly your child. <laughs> this is truly your child. <laughs> so, um, and then I just laughed. I mean, I, I think I did then what I just did now. Like, I just thought it was like so funny that she had this really quick comeback. So, which is to say like that approach got me nowhere, yeah. right? To oh. say there's words you can, like I can do it, but you can't do it. Yeah. But once... They get above a certain age, and I don't know what that magic threshold is, but somehow early adolescence. I just don't mind it mm. if it's not done in with heat, right? Like, mm. you can't swear at people, right? And that's where this boy is struggling. Mm. Mm. But if they use it to discharge frustration, mm. or if they use it for colorful language and telling a story, they're very clear, and I think I've made it clear. I'm like, you can't do that outside the house. Right. But in the house... I'm okay, You're okay with, it. with it. Okay. I think yeah. it's it's the bleeding outside of the house, which makes it so easy. I want to go back to this letter writer, this parent who who says sometimes there, there's like anger and it's directed towards siblings, which that's where I think I worry about. When mm-hmm. should you be concerned when the anger is and the, and the swearing is directed at people? Is that ever okay? It's never okay. And, and I... I think it's never okay no matter whose mouth it's coming out of. I don't think adults should swear at their kids, mm. you know, and I don't think kids should swear at other people in an angry and What's the big way. deal if, if someone swears at their kid or a kid swears at a sibling? Like, why is that so, so problematic? Isn't that interesting? Like, because it's just a word like any other yeah. word. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's sort of, but it's funny. Like, I think this is where a linguist would, you know, like, have like ways to th- help us think through. Like, there are taboo words. Mm-hmm. Swear words are taboo and more taboo in some families than others. And so then to use one, right, just like increases the intensity mm-hmm. of the attack. Even if it's just, you know, a string of letters like every other word is a string of letters, there are words that we have all come to agreement carry more force than other words, right? Mm-hmm. That um and so I think, you know, if it's used as an attack, then it's a more forceful attack. And we may be able to tolerate kids sort of, you know, pushing back on each other and maybe even a little teasing. But once you sort of use a certain, you know, word, it's now crossed a line, it's taken to a different place. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't think we should do it. I don't think we should let our kids do it. And I think we can say, you can be mad, you cannot swear at people. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is just going to be a family rule. Mm -hmm. And it gets to, it's interesting right now, I was thinking about like, I let my kids do it in the house, but tell them not to do it outside of the house. You know, one of the rationales for why my rule is a bad rule is that sometimes people will say, and this is fair, if you don't want them using it outside the house, yep. you don't want them to accidentally use it outside totally. the house because they're using it comfortably in the house. And that's that exactly is right. totally fair. And then you can sort of, that same argument could hold, right, which is if you don't want them using it in anger, well, then they shouldn't use it at all because then it might accidentally come out when they're in anger. And like right. you want that kind of inhibition around the word to be more universal so they don't accidentally use it outside the house and they don't accidentally Mm. use it when they're mad at somebody. Mm. Like that is an argument that I can totally see. You know, this mom had asked about uh, therapy saying, look, we're just kind of strapped and can't afford therapy. But really, like, would you need therapy for cursing? When would you ever need therapy for Mm. cursing? Yeah, I think it wouldn't be for the cursing. I think it would be for the pain. The pain. You know, that this kid I think Mm. is in and, you know, is – you know, he's telling us something that he mm. is, you know, explosive and going after Sibs. And, you know, th- she's getting calls from school. I mean, this kid is mm. skywriting that he's in a lot of pain. The question you're asking is so critical because I think sometimes we go after, like, the behavior like it's a disciplinary issue. Yeah. Right? And we put yeah. kids in therapy to discipline them or get their behavior in line. 
And that's just not how we want to be thinking about therapy, right? Therapy is to help understand what's driving the behavior that's so problematic and tend to the needs that are not being met that are causing this problematic behavior, not just to, you know, punish the kid into stopping doing the thing we don't want them to do. Hmm. That's an important distinction. You said something when we were sort of producing and prepping for this episode about the this is a great topic because it's sort of the foundation, family foundations. I think it was the word you were talking about. There's there's a beautiful way you put it. And I said, oh, you're right. Like, you know, you can have rules, but they should be sort of, you know, that the kids know this is going to be part of our rules. This is part of our culture, right? That's right. So, you know, I was thinking about swearing and, and why I wanted to take it up, right? Because it's, you know, it's not the biggest deal thing that we've dealt with by any measure, but I do think it gets to these kind of principles that really matter in parenting. And I would say really one of the critical principles is predictability. Hmm. So I was allowed to swear as a teenager, hmm. and my mom likes to swear. Hmm. And it was it was a non-thing. It was a non-event in our household. But, and this there may be no defensible logic to this, if I left a spoon in the sink, it was the end of the world. Like a dirty <laughs> spoon in the sink was like the end of the world. So you could easily make the case of like, Dirty spoon in the sink is a much like lighter crime right, mm, than totally. you know, using the F word as a teenager. Yeah. You can make that case. But what mattered is I knew exactly what I was going to get in trouble for. Mm. So I wasn't going to get in trouble for swearing, but I was going to get in trouble for spoons in the sink. And those were consistent and predictable and expectable rules. Mm-hmm. And what really makes it hard on kids is if sometimes when you drop the F bomb, your parent laughs. And sometimes when you do it in the exact same way, suddenly you're grounded. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't want to see. Like there needs to be a sense of the kid knows what's going to happen when they do X. There does not have to be a totally consistent logic to what happens (laughs) when the kid does X. Kids need to be able to predict their parents. And I think so often when we talk about parenting, like it's important to be consistent. I would flip it and say it's important for your kid to be able to predict you and predict your behavior, because then they can make adjustments and work with and around your particular preferences. So on these family foundations, what's your advice then on something like swearing, right? Because it comes up at some point. What would you advise parents on this? So I would advise parents to be predictable. Be predictable. And you don't even have to be consistent if you're in a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. You can have one parent you can swear in front of and one parent you can't swear in front of. It just has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. That, that to me, is the most important thing. And then, of course, like, you don't swear at people. And, you know, if you feel strongly, which you very well may, like, you don't swear outside the house, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you can make all your rules. Go right ahead. Lorena, I want to get back to the research basis for why. Yes, tell me. Yes, (laughs) I I can't believe you've actually got, of course I can believe you've got research on this. Of course. (laughs) Swearing helps relieve stress. Really? Yeah, it does. And I have to tell you the studies, because like, you know, I love sometimes like the methodology. The studies are so clever. Okay. So what these research studies do is they use something, I don't know why we call it that. We call it the cold presser task. I I don't get P-R-E-S-S-O-R. I don't know why we call it that. We have people put their arm in ice water (laughs) and- The thing about ice water is if you put your arm in it, before too long, it actually becomes painful. Yeah. But it's not harmful. Mm -hmm. And then we see how long they can tolerate it. And we time them. And what's really fun in these research studies, you can tell I just like love this, is that in one condition, we let people say words, but not swear words. They can say fork or, you know, sock or whatever they want to say. In the other condition, we let them just like go full on with the Mm. swear words. People who go full on with the swear words can tolerate the cold longer. They can keep their arm in the painful. Like it reduces the stress and discomfort of being in the ice water and they can tolerate the pain more. So I Hmm. indulge myself (laughs) when I am stressed. (laughs) I will let some words fly, you know, in the privacy of my office, in talking to her, you know, like... Because it reduces stress. I and felt that. I felt that before. Yes. Now, like, okay, it's, the light bulb is going off in my head. I felt this that. This is exact. why people swear often. Mm. And, and there's even like features of swear words that make them stress relieving, like the, the strong k, <laughs> the t 
up, right? Yeah. Like that they yeah. have to have um, a particular kind of um, sound that makes them um, work the way they do. Okay, you just blew my mind. I did not <laughs> see that coming about cursing and swearing. Yeah, no, it's got a place in our lives. No, I I'm never... not going to say that, that that's the last word and everybody gets to swear whenever they want. Like that's that's up to families to make their decisions. Yeah. But I just get such a kick out of that research study. Oh my gosh, that's fascinating. Okay, whole new perspective on cursing that I never thought I'd, I'd have. Well, there's also one other. Let's just throw this in. There are regional differences on this. Totally. And I will tell you, where I live in Ohio, adults don't swear in one another's company. Hmm. But where I grew up in Colorado, adults did. Hmm. And I remember sort of learning that when I moved here, like almost 25 years ago, that like, I, you know, I remember like a kind of raising eyebrows really? where if in the company of other adults, I casually used a swear word that was seen as untoward. I've adjusted to it. I make my choices. And I, you know, in public settings in my community, I don't swear because I just know that that is not done in our area. Um, but when I go home to Denver, it's I can okay. switch into what the conventions are there. Okay. You blew my mind. I, this was not the conversation <laughs> I thought we were going to have. But wow, you came with okay, research are too. Sold? Are you going to let yourself swear some more if you want um, to? Yes, I am going to let myself swear some more. Probably not around my my children, but now I get it. I get it. Yeah. And I think so much of it is how you were raised too, right? Like my yeah. mom just hated curse words, just could not. It just drove her nuts. And um, But I don't think that's how most of the world operates. <laughs> but- this yeah. is it's such a nice example of a place where reasonable people will disagree. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And you also got to know your kid <laughs> and Absolutely. how impulsive they are and how able they are to, if you allow swearing in your home, how yeah. much confidence you have that they've got good breaks and are not going to swear outside mm -hmm. of the house. Like, so even within the own family, one family, I could see um, adopting a no swearing rule because one kid really needs it. The other kids don't, but one kid does. So you got to make a blanket rule. Mm -hmm. I could see that too. I love that also that you said one size doesn't always fit all for a lot of these things we've talked about before in previous podcasts. So Lisa, what do you have for us for Parenting to Go? Well, I want to get back to raunchy lyrics and okay. Taylor Swift Ooh, <laughs> and your love, son switching it over to love explicit. Her. I do love her. <laughs> okay. You're not surprised to hear this. I have a pretty high tolerance for kids listening to inappropriate lyrics. Mm -hmm. I don't love misogynistic, hateful, violent stuff, but you know, Taylor and her F-bombs. I have a pretty high tolerance for it. And a reason for that is that one of the ways I watch teenagers rub adults the wrong way is by standing near the fire but not being in the fire, right? Listening to stuff that's kind of inappropriate, um, watching shows <laughs> that can be a little bit um, spicy, that's sometimes how teenagers get the gratification they need of feeling like they're not being a total goody two shoes conforming in every way mm -hmm. is by engaging media that has some stuff that they know their parents would not love. Mm. Of course, it can quickly cross a line into stuff that is really not okay or overwhelming or stuff our kids should not be exposed to. But I have seen a lot of teenagers absolutely toe the line all the way through adolescence and get the gratification for rubbing adults the wrong way they needed by listening to music that their mm. folks were not into. Well, I'm grateful. Now, I, should I just not be weird about it when, when Taylor was cursing in my car? Just roll with it and don't make such a big deal because that's been the advice for my kids, mom. You're making it weirder than it needs to be. There's really no way to get this wrong, Rena. You can either be like, you know what? Taylor's Taylor. She can do what she wants. <laughs> you guys aren't Taylor yet. Or you can say, you know, I feel really strongly about swearing and I really wish she weren't doing it. And luckily she publishes non-explicit forms of her music. Like okay. these are both totally acceptable right. responses, right? Mm -hmm. There's wonderful variety. There's so many ways to get it right as a parent. And, and I think this is such a great example of mm -hmm. just that. Well, I'm so grateful that you also shared all this research on how cursing can relieve stress and walking us through that. Because, you know, next week in the U.S., we are having elections for a new president of the United States. So we decided to find the perfect guest who might be able to help us through and help talk it through with our families. Dr. Tova Klein is going to join us, and she'll be talking about helping children thrive in times of uncertainty. I'll see you then. I'll see you next week. <laughs> 